welcome back to Beyond the Gate, our full metal alchemist brotherhood podcast. I'm Megan. And I'm Meg. And today we're talking about episode 29, Struggle of the Fool. Yes, in this episode, the Alrics are at Bradley's mercy. If the brothers make one wrong move, those tears to them will pay. As Mustang quietly gathers allies at his side, Ed discovers there may be no need to find a philosopher's stone. Yeah, this was a good aftermath episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it was another one of those like uh, you know, end of the battle wrapping things up. Yeah. Like what's going to happen next kind of episodes, but it's good. So, let's let's start this. So Envy is taking Ed and Al somewhere. They t- he takes them to an elevator and they go up and the elevator opens and they are in central command. They were right under it. Um, and Envy has transformed into some random, random soldier, and he tells the boys that they are dirty and they need to clean up before they go to see Wrath. Ed is showering, and we, I just had to shout out his hair is beautiful. Yes. He's, yep, golden uh, every, locks. Yep, every time I see it down, it's it's so envious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am envious of him. Um. And he tells he tells um Al about his body and yeah. it's super cute. Al is like so he's like so excited. He's like, They hate my body. It's it's uh It's there. There's a possibility to get it back. He's yeah, got hope yeah. for the first time in what, five years? Yeah, he's so excited and I was excited for him. <laughs> yeah. Uh in the manga they have a little bit longer of a conversation about it and Ed kind of poses using a philosopher's stone to go back in to get him out. And Al is dead set against it. Like, we can't use people. We know what the philosopher's stone is made out of. But Ed just, like, yells at him and says, you didn't see your body. And then he kind of, like, sobers up and says, if you'd seen your skinny butt, you'd feel the same way. <laughs> I like it. And it's uh, it's awesome. We get to see, we get to see more... Um, more- inside in, into Ed's style because when he's done with the shower he like spikes his little hair up um so he, his little he makes hair antenna it. is deliberate yep. yep um and while he's while he's uh about to you know get changed and whatever he sees he sees Xiao Mei the and he's like why do you still have that thing and then we see that Mei is actually inside of Al's body she's she's not doing too hot um but ed ed freaks out he's like why'd you have to bring her here like what are you doing and al of course he's such a gentleman he's like i had to she was hurt what i was well yeah he um she couldn't go with scar in the end it this was the best mm -hmm. option yeah which i honestly i totally forgot about until um we saw this and i was like oh (laughs) oh yeah i forgot she didn't actually go with scar at the moment, Envy comes into the bathroom, and Ed is um, completely naked, and they both scream. And I've got two notes on this. All right. The first is that I don't know what it is about, like, when a hero and a villain share an emotion. I just find it awesome in, like, the the um, community reaction of something. It was also just kind of hilarious to see Envy, like, who's who's normally like, I'm so bad, I'm so evil, just lose mm-hmm. it over seeing someone naked. Um, but um, the second thing was in the manga, um, he like, Envy comes in because he hears Ed's reaction to Al saying that he's got May with him, and uh, Ed is able to cover up with a towel before Envy gets in there and Ed's just like making up the slam excuse like I slipped on that bar of soap right there see that, that that's why I yelled yeah I slipped and he just comments um stop acting like you're in a manga and walks away breaking, <laughs> like breaking uh, the fourth wall yeah breaking the fourth wall a little um so then Envy uh he takes them to Wrath and he opens the door and Wrath is Fear Bradley, which of course we already know, but Ed like figures it out right away. He's like, oh he, yeah, he's a monkey list, which like they'd already discussed with yeah, Mustang Link earlier. Had said, had yeah, said that. so like they already kind of suspected, but so it didn't take him that long to figure out who Wrath was. 
Roy is also in the room, and Ed's kind of like, what are you doing here? And Roy just basically tells him that, like, all his people have been scattered, and and he's kind of uh, helpless right now. And it's it's interesting because Al, Ed and Al, and Mustang, and it's just the Fuhrer, and they, they, like, zero in on, like, he only has his, has his sword, and they're like, wow, he's that confident that he can take all three of us on. Um, so, like, don't cross him. Then uh, May, May coughs inside of Al's body. And Al, Al and Ed, like, freak out and Al starts fake coughing, which... Everyone uh, knows he's hollow. Yeah, it's he's not... hollow on the inside. Like, he, he has no reason to cough. But like, the just... fear has to know he's hollow, right? Because they're the candidates for the human sacrifice because yeah, oh yeah, they did the human sure transportation. Knows. No, he and he uh, saw he saw it no. when um they were fighting greed. Right. In the sewers. Right. Yeah. Basically the fear tells that now to keep their heads down and like don't interfere with their plans. You guys are powerless. And Ed is like, Really? Oh really? He like pulls out his watch and he tries to resign. And he kind of, he has realized that the state alchemist program is just for finding sacrifices. The Fuhrer takes, takes the watch and he looks at it and there's, there's blood on it, which mm, I don't know whose that is. Maybe, I think it's just from being in gluttony's stomach and like, being okay. Yeah. With oh the yeah. Dirt and grime and blood. Yeah. He, so he takes it and then he, he brings up Winry. He's like, Oh, your little, uh, Automail friend, Winry Rock- Rockbell, is it? And like she's in, uh, oh my gosh, she's over in Rush Valley. Yeah, and she's, yep. And she's like such an honest, nice young lady. And wouldn't it be well, a shame? Yeah, you know? <laughs> happened to her. Yeah, classic, mm. um, classic threat. And Ed gets very upset, understandably, and he takes the watch back. It's forced to stay. As a dog yeah, of the military. Forced, he's forced to stay. And then um, Al asks the Fuhrer if they can still search for their bodies. And he says that they can. And then they ask Roy what he's going to do. And he's also going to stay in his position. Um, he's not giving up on his ambitions. So that kind of concludes the meeting. They, they all get up to leave. But then um, Mustang asks if... The fear was the one who killed Hughes, and he says no, but he won't tell him who did it. Still a mystery to to Mustang. And as also as they're leaving, the fear is like, Al, will you wait a moment? And then he stabs Al in the side, and then and then nothing happens, and he's like, hmm, interesting. And then they leave, and of course we see as soon as they get out, Ed and Al are like freak out. Um, that was so close. Yeah, yeah, and we see we see May and Xiao Mei in in, uh, in Al's legs. I love it, and May's just like that almost took off my head. <laughs> she's she's like squished down in one of Al's legs, so her head just barely comes up to like just below waist level. She's lucky she's mm-hmm. not any taller; she would have been dead. Yeah. After after they're done with their meeting, uh, Ed asks uh, Mustang for money. And, um, he gives him, he gives him some and he's like, what, you don't have any? Um, and then of course they like bicker a little and then Ed yeah. and Al run off. I like it in the manga better because Ed takes him and goes, that's pathetic. That's all you've got. <laughs> Ed doesn't have anything. So, so yeah. I'm saying. um, he just got back from like a vast bloody void. What he expect? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And. Roy, of course, he immediately goes to find Hawkeye, and and Armstrong is waiting for him. Um, and <laughs> Mustang is so disappointed, and and Armstrong's like, "You look why? Why are you so disappointed?" He's like, "And Mustang, I love his line. He says, just how would you expect me to appear? I was hoping a young woman um would be standing here, not a mustachioed muscle man." <laughs> and then in that in that moment, the the lieutenant she comes back and uh, she took a latrine break. She's been and standing then they, there all night. Yeah, that's crazy. I would not. Nope. Not for me. And then, I don't know, it's kind of a sweet, sweet exchange. 
between Roy and Riza because you know they're they're separated now. Um, Riza's been transferred to serve as um, the Fuhrer's like personal um, uh, personal aid. Yeah. Yep. And basically, some of the the conversation is that they're not giving up on each other, even though they're they'll they won't be working together. They're 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 still a team, and it's very sweet. And then we go back to Ed now, and they are calling Winry. Um, they're at, at a phone booth, of course, always at a phone booth. Um, yeah, and honestly, they uh, like seriously, they always make it look like it's the same phone booth, which it totally might be. And I, it might, it really might. I don't like that. <laughs> um, and, and that's that is what they were using the colonel's money for. Um, they needed to call Winry, and he, Ed asks asks if she she's okay, and if any if she's noticed anybody like following her or anything. And Winry's like, well, this is weird. Like, I never get a call from you. And you're never, like, you know, it's so weird that you're worrying about me. And Ed, being Ed, he's like, well, fine. Maybe I won't worry about you. Mm-hmm. Um, and Winry's like, no, it's it's nice. And it's a sweet, a sweet yeah. conversation. Um, and then they hang up and Greedling appears. <laughs> and he yeah, has we'll a note from, <laughs> yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, I, I that's. That is what I will call him. Yes. Um, it, it, it's, it makes the most sense. Yeah, and he has a note from Ling that, that um, Ed and I'll need to give to Lan Fan. And I don't know. I I just I love Green Ling so much. He's just he's just really annoyed because at first Ed and I'll call him Ling. He's like, I'm not Ling. Like, it's stop green. calling me that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I don't even remember how this came up, but we learned that Greed doesn't fight women. Oh, yes. Because... I, um. They they ask like oh if we give this if if we're going to give this message to Lon Fon you're just gonna follow us so you can try and kill her or something and he's like no so I have a policy never to fight women and my other policy is never to lie so we we kind of learn that he's he's got some weird sort of moral code yeah then we go back to Scar who we haven't seen yet in this episode but um he is still in the sewers he has killed like the Seems like the last chimera that that was Sorry. after him. Sorry, the circle of life just popped into my head. <laughs> <laughs> and Scar is, I don't know, thinking about what Father said about the Ishvalan War and everything. And that's when Dr. Marco gets his attention. He's, as we know, he's trapped down there. And he's like, hey, dude, help me. You know, I'll do anything to, you know, I'll heal you or I'll help you out um, if you help me escape. So Scar go down, goes down there and Marco sees his face and he, well, first he realizes that, that he's just fallen and then he sees his face and he's like, oh, you're that guy. Um, and he starts to freak out. And then um, we, we leave them there um, and we go to Dr. Knox's house and we find out that May has a concussion, which makes sense. Needs, yeah, it makes sense. And she needs to rest. Um, and then Al gives Lon, Lon Fon Ling's message. And basically it says that he's found a philosopher's philosopher's stone and Lan Fon's like, yay, great. Like I need to, to go be with him and help him out. And then there's like a bunch of very short scenes. Um, yeah. Kind of go around a lot. Uh, Cause then we go to Wrath and Greed and Greedling and Wrath is, Wrath is meeting the new, new Greed for the first time. And they, they have kind of a um, Greed tells him that, you know, Ling, Ling was a prince you know this body of a prince and he's he gave up his body willing willingly and he's like he's kind of stupid then it's awesome because ling he takes possession of of his body to fight back and wrath and greed like oh he's a fighter he's not going to give up so just reminding us again that like ling's still in there he's not gone so i i like that (laughs) because i like we said in the last episode ling really uh he grows on you so, yeah, was, yeah. Very sad. Whether you to see want him go. to or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a freeloader. What did you? What did we yeah, expect? It, he is. He is. And then uh, Riza, Roy, and Armstrong—they're in—they're in the car, and Mustang and and Hawkeye are telling Armstrong that that Fuhrer is a homunculus, um, and kind of tells them what's been going on. Then we get some of Armstrong's backstory. Um, apparently, he was dismissed from Ishval. Um, because he he couldn't fight he couldn't see he didn't understand the point of of the war and it was it was breaking him and basically he he didn't he was disappointed in himself because he didn't stand up he was just 
he didn't stand up for his beliefs. He just, you know, was dismissed and then he didn't, he didn't try to stop, stop what was happening. Right. Um, and this time he, he vows that he's going to take a stand this time. Uh, he's not going to let them get away with what they've been doing. And then we find out that, well, Hawkeye and Armstrong find out that Mustang is not giving up either. He's going to, he's going to keep fighting. Um, and, and they're both shocked, but. I don't know why they would be because it's Mustang. Uh, and then uh, we, we leave them there and then we go back to Dr. Knox's house. Uh, Al is telling, telling Lon Fon what, what happened to Ling that, yeah, he found a philosopher's stone, but, but it's uh, somebody. complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. Um, and she's like, I, I need an arm to help him. Yeah. Um, and uh, in the manga, she has like this determined look on her face and Al compares her to ed and like the ter- determined look he had when he first wanted auto mail and um lon Fon says if he healed from auto mail surgery in a year i'll do it in six months and al's like she's gonna get along great with the rock bells <laughs> yeah she's i believe that she can do it six months she'll be back and while they're talking may comes into the room and they recognize each other um they're both you know, from Shing, and they're part of two two different clans, and you can tell there's some animosity there right away. Um, and this is also where we find out that May she is the seventeenth daughter. She is pretty uh, well to me. That seems low on the low on the totem pole. Um, and you know what? Honestly, I didn't think of the numbers before, but Ling was like the twelfth prince. Did he say? Yeah, he is. Uh, well, yeah, I think, so, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so it makes sense that like. She's the seventeenth daughter. If you look at their ages and where they're yeah, at, yeah, that would yeah, that yeah makes sense. That's such a to me that seems like such a terrible way to like run a qu- country. Is that yeah. like there's fifty clans and then like it's just asking for conflict. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Huh. And then May and Lanfan they start to try to fight, and and it's Al is like in between them, like. No, no, stop it! And they're and May's like, don't interfere with the affairs of our country. And then, uh, which I don't know, that just made me laugh. Um, and Doctor Knox comes in and he like, you guys are my patients and you're not going to fight. Um, basically, and May's like, don't interfere with the affairs of our country. And he's like, shut up! <laughs> like you're gonna you're gonna listen to me. Sit and down and heal. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of amazing. And they kind of shuts them up and they they uh, they quit. They cut it out, and Al and Dr. Knox are, well, Al's, he's just, just being a good boy. He's helping helping him um, clean and stuff, and he finds a photo of Knox's family, um, and it's pretty, like, it's just sad. Why do they have to remind us of his sad backstory? Because he, Knox, like, doesn't care, and he just, like, throws it away, and Al is, Al is like, shocked, like, why would you do that? Yeah, um, I love, I love what he says, like, you can't throw away a family photo, he he's he views it as like this this precious thing and he keeps it for him. Mm-hmm. So as you might have noticed, Al is just Al is the only one at Dr. Knox's house, not Ed. And then we see what Ed is Ed is doing, Ed is up to. He's been fixing up the, the homes and stuff that they destroyed during the during the fight with um with Scar. Which what a good boy. Yeah, he is such a good boy. And he's able to use his alchemy again. Yeah uh another manga note it's it's really cute so he he's eating a hot dog as he's going around helping people and because if you'll remember he's gone without food for quite a long time when he was trapped in gluttony's stomach um but he also checks up on the mps who got hurt during the battle and they're they're fine they just got knocked out and he apologizes for the trouble and he uh fixes um the woman's house like the the one he saved from the debris before and just other damage around the town. I just, I don't know. I I got a kick out of that. I like that he, you know, clean up after your mess. Yep. Um, His mama raised him right. Yep, he did. Um, And then the, we also find out, as Ed is talking to the MPs, that all of the alchemists couldn't use their alchemy during, like, when Ed and Al couldn't also. And then basically he's thinking about it more, and he's like, well, why... Why could Scar and May use theirs? Um, there must be there must be something different about it. And he wants to learn it. And then I hope he does. As, yeah. 
very last scene, um, we see he still has he still has a gun, um, and he needs to return it to Hawkeye. Yep. Uh, in the manga, there's a there's more to that. He gets her address from Breda, who is is still at Central Command. He's in the middle of packing, um, and Ed calls Breda kind of late at night, and he's in. I guess his hotel room or whatever. And I just had to mention it because it's another scene where he has his hair down. <laughs> uh, Amazing. I will. Yeah, I didn't read the manga this week, so I'll have to go back and look at that. You'll catch up. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so that's the end of the episode, but there's actually an extra scene at the end of the credits. Um, we see father sitting sitting in his room and we hear Mark, Dr. Marco talking. And he's telling Scar that he was forced to make a Philosopher's Stone and they want him to do it again. And he he calls Scar God and asks him to kill him. And that, like, as soon as he calls, calls Scar God, you, like, see his uh, Scar's eyes like, nope, I don't like that. Um, and he is very angry and he tells Marco to tell him everything. Tell me everything um, that happened to Dishfall. Everything. Don't leave, leave out a single detail. Yep. It's... Yeah, very intense. Uh, another note about Father, when we see him, something weird is happening. And he's got, like, veins kind of, like, popping out on his chest, and something crawls out of him. And this happens in the manga, too. It's like a baby gluttony. So he's, gluttony is reborn, unfortunately. No! Ew! <laughs> it's interesting, like, he gets reborn, but then, like, lost Yeah, actually... Isn't? Yeah, I think it's because her core was completely destroyed. He, in the manga, oh, yeah, there's a he... brief scene of him pulling the core out of gluttony before his body disintegrates entirely. He consumes the Philosopher's Stone, and he tells gluttony that he will reform him with all of his memories intact. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. All right, that's the end of the episode. We have something brief to discuss before we get to the end notes. Um... There was a short story at the end of this volume of Full Metal Alchemist. It was so cute. Um, it's when Ed and Al are really little. Like, Al is just like toddling around and he's so adorable. And, um, it's the Elric household back when their father was still living with them. And, uh, Ed is being very mean to Al. He's hitting him and just bullying him. Trisha just doesn't understand why he's being mean. And, um, Ed runs away, you know, like any kid does when they're in trouble. And um, he's just sitting outside of the bathroom and muttering to himself about how Al gets all the attention and his mom must not love him. And he's really upset. And unbeknownst to him, his father is in the bathroom hearing all of this. And his dad just like peeks out the door and is like, Ed, as punishment for bullying your little brother, you are going to hold this pail full of water. And Ed is just like, what? Why? It's heavy. And he tries, but gives up almost immediately because the thing weighs a lot to him. And his dad's like, you gave up already? Really? It's like, I can't do it. It's heavy. What do you expect? And he's like, well, that weighs about as much as a baby. And your mom had to carry you in her tummy for all those months. Do you really think she doesn't love you? And... That makes Ed think, and he goes back to Al, and Trisha thinks he's going to bully him again, but he ends up patting his head. It's like, resolute that he's going to be a good big brother. And mm -hmm. I like that one, because, I mean, it, it shows why, I guess, Ed is so protective of Al, because it's his duty as a big brother, but it also shows that his father did teach him some important lessons mm -hmm. when he was little, some formative things. And another funny thing. You don't you don't really get the humor in this until you watch the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood bloopers, but um Trisha and Al are walking down the hallway and Trisha's like, I think I'm gonna make stew tonight for dinner, Al. <laughs> Al's just got like drool coming out of his mouth. <laughs> he loves his stew. We'll cover yeah, the I... bloopers after we're done. With yeah. The show. Yeah, we will. Oh, it's so cute. The it's very cute. Mm. Yes, you do love your anime babies. Yes, I do. They make me so happy. <laughs> yeah, but that was just a cute little thing we wanted to mention. Uh, voice actor notes, we didn't have anything for that. And we didn't have any other commentary, like animation-wise or science-wise. This episode was just kind of us taking a breather, catching up after the last big fight. 
And um, one note we did have was a story elements analysis, and that was the return after the battle. Things are eerily normal after what our characters have been through. However, there are still threats lurking beneath the mundane. Mm, yeah, that's about it. Yep. So what was uh, your favorite line of the episode? Mine came from Roy, and he said, I never feel more human than when I'm fighting real monsters. I like that one. Mm-hmm, um, I do too. Yeah. What was yours? Mine came from Greedling. It's uh, it's when Wrath and, and Greed are talking, and Wrath says something along the lines of, like, that prince like cared about his people and he's so dumb or you know whatever uh for for caring about about them and ling then takes control of his body and he says shut the hell up don't est- underestimate humans <laughs> and he says it with like such intensity and it's, yeah, we're it's gonna awesome. have to show that meme too because the fierce reaction yeah, is yeah. hilarious there's there's some good memes of this episode hopefully i'll remember to post them because i have been really terrible about that lady Lately. Yeah, that's fine. We've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and then what was, what did we learn in this episode? Um, I think a line Riza said kind of sums, sums it up. She said, someone once told me never to give up, no matter what. And once was all I needed. So just don't give up, even though things are really tough. I think don't give up has been a moral before, but like, yeah, it's repeated it has. multiple times throughout this show. I think that's a, a key factor. So we're going to say it again. Yes, we are. I mean, I would say it's a over overarching theme because just like yeah. their whole journey it seems impossible, like them trying to get their bodies back, like mm-hmm. that seems like an impossible task, but they're not going to give up. And then who pushed the story forward? Ad and Mustang for staying on as state alchemists, even though there's danger surrounding them. Yep. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah, this was a, I don't know, I liked, even though, like, we've had some really, like, action-packed episodes, this one was, uh... It was nice. This one was, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, I, I still yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. All right, All right, we will be back next week with another episode. Yep, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.